Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica and today I have another one of my crafty podcasts. I think this is episode number 23. If you're new to my podcast, that is where I share all of my fun makes, all my works in progress, what I've got going on, and then I always throw in some sneak peeks too and I have some for you today. So let's go ahead and dive right into episode number 23. So I'm gonna start off with my ornaments because they did just release. I'm not gonna go through all of them here in today's video because I did that in the ornaments release video. So I'm gonna um, send you back that way to check all of those out. But I did wanna share them here just in case you missed that video. Here is what they look like. I've got both a stitchy or a stitchy version and a quilty version of these. They are super cute. They are all sewing themed and so lots of fun. The stitchy ones, are finished on these cute little tart tins. These are from Fat Quarter Shop, and they also sell the um, sticky board that goes inside. It fits perfectly in there, and so I mounted mine on a little bit of batting and then the round sticky board and then just hot glued it into these little tins, and then I added this ribbon on top. So they're really easy. They're perfect for beginners. If you haven't done much cross stitch, these are a great way to get started. They're really small pieces. The stitching itself finishes at about two inches by two inches, and then these tart tins are are about three inches by three inches. So they're perfect just to sit down in the evenings and do a little stitching. The pattern does have instructions on how to finish them on these little tart tins, but it also has instructions on how to finish them as a whole cloth. So if you wanna do all of them, I have a little border in there that you can add that's really, really cute. And then you could frame it or mount it on some sort of a Christmas sign or something like that. I think that would be adorable. Um, so here is an up close of the stitchy. And then here's the quilty ones. And these ones all finish at four inches by four inches. And I've just finished them off with this cute little mini palm trim around the outside. So very cute. These ones I actually didn't quilt on this year. I think the last previous two years I've quilted on the ornaments themselves. This time I actually just attached my top to some fusible batting or fusible fleece. And then just put the background on right sides together, sewed around it, you know, left an opening and turned them right side out. And then I added these fun palm trims. So these are really cute. These are also, I want to say maybe an advanced beginner. I always think of like a plain patchwork quilt as like super beginner. I would say these are a little bit more um, advanced beginner just because the pieces are really small, but there's nothing tricky happening in there. It's all straightforward piecing. And one of the things that I would definitely recommend if you're gonna do these would be Mary Ellen's Best Press or start your fat quarters before you start. That's just gonna help everything stay a little bit more accurate. And like I said, there's a lot of small pieces on these just because of the size of them. And so if you have starch, that's gonna help your, um, your fabric from distorting when you're putting those little pieces together. So that's the only kind of thing I would say about these. Otherwise, they're a lot of fun all traditionally pieced, so super straightforward, and again, all sewing theme related. So very cute, and then I just finished them off with a little ribbon and that rickrack hanger up there, but you could finish them off however you wanted. Last year, I think I did, oh, I, last year I did them in little kind of squishy pillows. Those were, did I? Oh, that was the stitchy ones. Last year, I think I just did these ones. I just sewed them right sides together, flipped them right side out, and then just did some quilting on them for fun. You could also make these into like little poofy pillows to hang on your tree, so they're like a little bit more like what we did with the stitchy ornaments last year. You can finish them however you want. I will say that this uh, mini palm trim was kind of a pain to get on and I originally started doing it with my machine and I do have a tutorial coming soon on how to finish these um, and the stitchy ones. I'll have a tutorial for both, so stay tuned for that. But these ones, I ended up hand stitching this mini palm trim on the back because it was just so much easier than trying to fight with my machine. And I almost wonder if I was using a zipper foot, if that might have helped, but these little palm pom-poms just kept pushing out and then I would sew this whole thing and then it just wouldn't even be attached. So just a word to the wise. If you're gonna do this, I recommend hand stitching it on. It actually didn't take me that long. There's only 12 of them, so it was pretty fast. And as much of a hassle that it was, I think it ended up being worth it because they look really cute on my tree. And I will insert some footage here of the tree that I took for you uh, when I did the release for these. It's so cute. And if you are at all into cross stitch or quilting, I highly recommend trying them both because I think on the tree, they really just complement each other and kind of go together, um, but 
if you want to just do one or the other, that would be cute too. And then you could fill in the opposite spaces with some cute baubles that kind of go along with the theme or something. So either way, here are my new So Jolly ornaments. These are all available in my shop right now. I am not sure if we still have quilt kits left. You can check Catching Stitches. She did have quilt kits available. They might be sold out by the time this video goes live. And then we did put these back up on pre-order and I believe these are also sold out. So. Either way, if you're interested in the kits, definitely go and check. These are available in my store at store.confessionsvillehomeschooler.com and the kits for the quilty ones are available at catchingstitches.com. So you can check and see. I think they're sold out, but it doesn't hurt to take a quick look. We are gonna be doing a sew along and a stitch along in November. So if you wanna get all of your supplies ready to go and stay tuned, I'll be giving more information. I'll probably put that here on YouTube and also on my Instagram and Facebook. So as long as you're following me in one of those places, um, you can get the information for those sew alongs and we might have some fun prizes and stuff. So that's still in the works, but I did wanna share these since they just released and they're so much fun. So, so jolly, quilty and stitchy ornaments. All right, I have a fun thing to share with you guys today. Now, I released some stickers. Um, it's been a couple months now, and I actually had them in one of my podcasts showing, but they sold out the second that I released them, so I had to take it out of the video because I we were sold out. So I have since done a second run, and now we have done a third run of them. And each time I do them, I change them up a little bit, try and make them a little bit better. Um, and include some of the things that you guys ask for as well. And I do have a sticker run coming up that is going to, I think, be my trucks, my trucks of the month. I think I'm gonna do seasonal stickers for those, so let me know what you think about that. And I apologize, this bag is super crinkly. But I think I'm gonna do, I think the trucks of the month would be really cute in stickers. So let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see those. I'm kind of already working on them. Hopefully it'll be something that you guys would be interested in. Uh, but I'll just show you all of them really quick. I have one that says, oh, sew, press, quilt, based, bind, and repeat. So that's cute. And I have that on a t-shirt um, as well. We've got a sister's choice. We have a cute little tomato pin cushion. I have a star and a star. I have the sewing machine, and then I did an Ohio star. And the Ohio star and the star and a star, after I got them in person, I'm like, these are actually really similar if you turn this one. It's supposed to go this way, so then they're different, but if you turn it this way, <laughs> they're actually the same. And I didn't really notice that when I was making it because I designed it this way as an Ohio star and a sawtooth star. So I probably remove one of these from the sticker pack and just put something else in there. And maybe I'll put a truck in in place of this or something like that. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, but you get six stickers in the pack. They are vinyl stickers, so they're good for water bottles, laptops, um, tablets. I have them on my sewing machine. You can put them on your computer monitors, your guitar cases, et cetera, et cetera. So they're really nice quality and they're just a lot of fun. So let me know what you guys think of these in the comments below and you can get these in my shop. As of the time of filming this video, we do still have some available. Um, they sell out really quick and I just do a new run. So um, if you don't get them this time, don't worry about it. I will, that will be restocking these. They might be a little bit different than what I'm showing now, um, but people seem to really like these. So we'll probably keep them in the shop for a while. And then we're just gonna move right into cross stitch. So cross stitch I have um, my, last year you know we did our Trucks of the Month series, this year we're doing our House of the Month series. And so I have October here. The October one went live, so you guys should have all seen that. So these were the trucks from last year, super, super cute. And I just finished um, both of these the same way, actually is why I'm kind of showing you this way. So they both have those washers, just hot glued onto the back, and then I can swap them out with the wood boards. So I don't have to keep buying different wood boards. So so here is the October truck of the month. It's got those cute little pumpkins in the back. And then here is the October house of the month. This one's a little bit more, got a spooky vibe. And I thought that fall tree over there would be really fun. So it's got a few different colors of oranges in there. And the pattern for this one is where the little squares are the color it needs to be. There's symbols in there also, but I think visually it's a little bit easier for me anyways. And so how I do something like this is I'll go through and I'll do all one color and I'll just count that tree out, do all that color, put that aside, do all the next color. And then as you go, you start seeing spaces for the next color. So I think it's a little bit easier to do it that way, um, but you could stitch it however you want. I know some people have all of the colors going at once and they literally just stitch it row by row with whatever color is called for. So 
you can do it with whichever way you prefer. Um, and then I have a cute little pumpkin quilt hanging on our fence here and another little fall bush here. And then of course some leaves floating in the sky. This fabric on the back of this one is from my fig tree collection. I think it was called All Hallows Eve. It came out, I wanna say last year, or maybe it was earlier this year. I think it was all last year. Um, but fig tree always puts out great oranges um, this time of year. So you can definitely check online if you can't get you know something similar to this. I'm sure they have a different orange that um, will work just fine. And then here's the board that I mount them on. And I've showed this in all of my videos, but there's the Hobby Lobby uh, number down here on the bottom for it. And then I just put those magnets on the board. We've got the, the washers on the back and then you can just put them on there and then it stays. For some reason, these particular ones like aren't magnetic. So I have to pull these off and I just haven't done it yet. I don't know why it hasn't happened on any of my other um, washers. They all stick to these just fine. So like here's September and see, it just stay, it stays on there perfectly. So I don't know what happened to the washers on my October house. Maybe I have no idea. Um, so yeah, so I need to take those off so that I can display it in my room because right now I still have my September house up. So those are my stitchy houses for October. I did think it would be fun to show you November since it's right around the corner. So here is the November truck of the month. It's got some fun little leaves in the back of the truck piled up there. And then of course the letters and we've got a little swirly underneath that truck as well. The fabric for this one was also a fig tree print. I think this was from their farmhouse or farmhouse two line. So you definitely can't find this fabric anymore. What I do with, in, you know, when I'm making quilts and stuff, obviously I keep all of my scraps. I have a um, how I store my scraps video here on YouTube, but some scraps I have are a little bit bigger and I actually just kind of fold them as best as I can and put them back in these little white buckets that you can see right here. And then that way when I'm doing something like these, I can go and find, you know, whatever little squares I have left and they're perfect to use to back your cross stitch pieces because this isn't really big enough to use in a full size quilt. I don't have much more of this left, but it was perfect to fit on the back of one of these. So that is the November truck. And then here's the November house of the month. This one is releasing October 15th. I'm not sure when this video is gonna go live, so it may already be released. If not, it will be coming soon, but I figure I'll give you a sneak peek of it. So we've got this cute little gabled front porch. We have a fun tree over here with some leaves on it. Of course, I did some leaves in the sky again. And then we have a cute little quilt here on the side that has little leaves on it and November. And so I just thought this one was really cute. The backing for it is also a fig tree print from my stash. This was from their farmhouse line. So again, an older print, I just have it in my bucket over here and I just dig through whatever greens and see what size, if I have a piece big enough to cover this sticky board. So very, very cute. I love the November house. That one's not sticking either. What is happening? Is it possible to put these washers on the wrong way? I don't think so. Cause I've interesting. I wonder if I just had some bad washers in my, how is that a thing? Cause look, here's my October house that sticks and my November. And that is so weird. Okay. If you guys have any ideas on why these ones are somehow not magnetic, suddenly let me know. They were the last ones in the drawer. Would it be possible that it got too close to the magnets and it somehow I don't even know. I thought on the other one that I had some hot glue on the washers, which I did. So I peeled that off and it didn't fix the problem, but this one doesn't have, I was very careful when I put these ones on and it's still not sticking. So if you have any idea why my washers are suddenly not magnetic, let me know in the comments below, but here's basically what it'll look like when I get it to stay on my little paddle here. So that is so weird. I don't know what's happening there, but anyway, I'll have to figure that out. So here is October and November, and I've said this before, but just to clarify, all of the house patterns are currently available in PDF only individuals. You can buy the October house by itself, the November house by itself. Once they're all released, I will bundle them together and you can get them all in one PDF or you'll be able to get them in a um, printed format as well. But I'm not gonna do that till they're all released. So you can either kind of wait around for them or you can buy the individual PDFs. I will say that when I bundle them together, I usually do a little bit of a discount on that. So so it'll be a little bit cheaper to buy it that way than to buy them individually. So um, it's kind of up to you and I, I hate to do that, but it's just not worth it for me to print individual PDFs. Um, so anyways, it is what it is, but those will be available um, soon because we're already in October, which is crazy. So we only have a couple months left and then we'll have those whole um, available. The trucks are already available in PDF and print. You can buy them individually or you can buy them as a bundle as well. Okay, next up I wanted to talk 
about my Pumpkinville cross stitch because last podcast I had actually just started working on it. And so there's been a little bit of time between now and then. So it is finished. I got this cute little wood board thing from TJ Maxx and there's like a little fall saying on the front of it. So that ended up just getting covered up totally. This box is about eight by eight. So it's really almost like just the perfect size for it. And then I finished my pieces on two pieces of sticky board. So here's my stitchy piece and then this orange fabric on the backing is a Lori Holt gingham print. And then on the top, I just had a lot of fun with my hot glue gun, some cute fall ribbon, some dried flowers, and then a cute little faux pumpkin up here on the top. I do have a finishing video on how I put all of this together if you're interested, so you can definitely head over um, and check that out. But I did wanna share it on here on the podcast because it is finished and I just had so much fun. Now, one of the things that I wasn't counting on because this stands up by itself because it's, you know, a board. One of the things I wasn't counting on was the fact that the cross stitch when you put it on the front makes it really top heavy. And then this stuff is actually kind of leaning towards the front as well. So it doesn't stand up quite as well as I'd hoped it would. So I either have to put like a rock back here, which is totally an option. Or honestly, I had it setting on a little, um, like a little mini easel. That was a great option. You could also even just lean it up against something as well, but it does get a little top heavy and kind of fall over on itself. So um, in an effort not to ruin it, um, I did have to find just a little bit of a different way to display it. But here's the top. I have this kind of burlap ribbon. I've got a cute orange gingham ribbon, which was so fun. And then the rest of those are just the dried flowers. I got all of that at Michael's. So I got the ribbon and the little dried flowers and the little pumpkin and everything at Michael's. And I just went and picked some stuff that kind of mimic the colors in here. I couldn't find anything aqua. If I could have, I maybe would have put that up there, but unfortunately I couldn't find any little mini aqua flowers that were the right like size or vibe. So um, this is what I ended up using, but I think it turned out really good. And it just is a perfect little fall accent for my home. So um, head over and check out the finishing video for this because that was a lot of fun. And then this matches the Pumpkinville quilt and I'll show you that in just a little bit. So this is Pumpkinville cross stitch. It's all DMC floss. It's 14 count white Ada. I do pretty much all my stuff on 14 count right now. I don't know if that will change in the future, but it's just easiest for me to see. And I've tried doing some smaller ones. And now that I'm a little better, maybe I could handle it, but my eyes are not great. And I don't like sitting there feeling like I'm just stressing myself out. Um, and so a pair of glasses, some good lighting and 14 count Ada is kind of where it's at for me right now. So that's what it's stitched on. So nothing fancy. Um, and like I said, all DMC floss, but of course you can always swap it out with, if you have like a fancy floss that you prefer you could always do that as well. So the inner piece finishes about six by six or maybe six and a quarter somewhere in there. I just cut my sticky board for the backing about a half an inch larger so that it just is peeking out. You could also put some rickrack or some kind of decor around that as well and make this um, piece just a little bit larger. There's a lot of fun finishing options for these. So um, let me know in the comments below if you did this, how you finished it. Um, and if you can either tag me on social media or email me a photo, you can send it to Erica at confessions of a homeschooler.com. I always love seeing how you guys finish your projects. So that is Pumpkinville. That's all the cross stitch I have to show you. I'm gonna move on to crochet because I have something fun to share. So I don't think I showed this last time. Um, I'm almost positive I didn't, but if I did, forgive me. I started a new project between last time and this time I've actually made some pretty good progress because I've been fairly uh, monogamous on this project. But I saw a photo and I'll show you here in just a minute of this crochet blanket. This is called the Gem Blanket Collection and it is by Marion Mitchell of Wood Thread Paint. She has beautiful crochet afghans and they're all sort of this medallion style afghan and they are absolutely amazing. So she has a couple different colorways that she gives you in this pattern um, and then she has a ton of different pictures on her website as well. So Bean Crochet does a lot of her patterns and she actually posted this picture and I wanted, as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, those colors are so fun and it's beautiful. So I've been kind of referring back to this as a little bit of a guide of what colors to use. The pattern itself has three different colorways included and she tells you which ones to use. So she's got um, the little gem, the rosy, and then she has kind of a fall one over here on the other page, which is called the spiced gem. So these pictures are a little bit hard to see partly because of my printer and partly because they're really small. If I had one thing to say about this pattern, I would prefer if she showed 
larger images of the sections. Um, so I've been really referring back to that other image that I found on Instagram to kind of help me along the way. Um, but I have had so much fun making this blanket and it's actually going a lot faster than I thought it would because I am using my leftover Lori Holt yarn that I used for my crochet tote and um, I did a pillow here on YouTube and I've done all kinds of stuff with this yarn, but I had a bunch left over and here's my pile <laughs> and I had to, I did have to buy some new yarn to finish off this blanket, but I'm really going through it quite quickly and I think it's going to turn out beautiful. So, um, I'm, I'm okay having to buy some extra yarn. So here, I just, I'm going to show you this little file. These are what, um, this is my in progress portion, my whip portion. Um, you have to make. 40 of these and so you make these cute little center flowers they're adorable and these are very similar to i did some little crochet flower doilies here on youtube uh, this center is actually very similar to those so it was really easy for me to pick up it's slightly different but not too different so i'm working on the outer the second row of granny squares now but i'm going to show you my progress because i have had so much fun with this blanket so here we are this is how far I am right now. So I've got that center, um, you know, nine patch done. And then I have the granny stripe rows and then I have one row of outer granny squares done. And she uses the join as you go method to add these granny squares on. So it's actually really fast and easy. Um, and also it looks really cute as well. So here's my progress. I figured I would show you guys. I need to take a picture and put it on Instagram. So my next thing that I'm doing right now is another round of granny stripes. And then after that, I'll add all of these uh, once they become full size granny squares. So these are actually the same square as these ones in the middle that look kind of like a little pinwheel or wagon wheel or something like that in there. So those are gonna go around. After this, now I'm working on granny stripe rounds, which is gonna be really fun. And then we'll have that last round of granny squares once I finish all these off. And then I think there's some more granny stripes um, around after that. So mine is probably gonna be a little bit smaller because the yarn I'm using is not the called for. She calls for like a DK weight and the Lori Holt, um, Chunky Thread is really a fingering weight yarn. It's like a size two yarn, but I thought it would be just be a really cute throw uh, just to stick on the back of the couch or, you know, over my chair here in my sewing room or something like that. So um, I will say that you do kind of need to know what you're doing to follow this pattern. The instructions are okay, but they're UK instructions. So you kind of have to mentally, you know, switch those terms a little bit for yourself. And then some of the areas I've been a little bit confused, but not too confused. I just have to read over it more than once. Um, and also sort of trust the pattern type situation. So it's like, okay, this sounds weird, but I'm just gonna give it a shot, worst case I can pull it out. And then as you go, you start seeing what's happening. So um, it was, it's been a little bit of a challenge for me to follow, but I think it's more just a learning curve for me um, and not necessarily the pattern. I think it could use a little bit more pictures so that you can see what certain elements should look like. Um, the pictures are kind of sparse in there, but you can find a lot of these pictures online. She has them all over her Instagram. And like I said, there's other people making them. So it's really handy to be able to go and look at theirs and just see what colors they chose and what theirs is looking like. So um, anyways, this is my progress. I'm really excited about this. I think it's gonna be really cute. And this is, once you get the hang of it, it's actually pretty easy. So I've been just enjoying stitching on this in the evenings. It's also really easy to take to a knit group because sometimes I'm working on these outer stripes but sometimes I'm just working on the little mini squares and that's really easy to just pick up and go and not have to be counting a whole lot or you know doing anything that requires too much brain power so anyways this is my little gems blanket and I can't wait for this to be done but I'm also going to be sad when it's done because it's been really fun to work on so she has a Christmas one that she had just posted a picture of recently and I may have to I don't know, I might have to do that one next. It's got a sage green, a red, and then I think she's got white and maybe some gray or something like that in there. I can't remember now, but it was really pretty. And when I saw it, I thought, okay, <laughs> well, that might be my next upcoming project. But, and then I'm housing it all in my, I think this is called Erica's Carry All Tote, something similar to that. I will link it below. Um, but this is perfect for all of this yarn. It fits everything in there plus my little blanket. I don't know how long my blanket's gonna fit in there. Um, but it's actually a pretty good sized tote for all this stuff. So I'll make sure to link that below. That is a free YouTube tutorial here and you can check that out as well. 
Okay, we're gonna move on to quilting. I'm gonna start off with our Sew With Me quilt blocks because we are on block, I think number 10, if it hasn't released already, it is releasing like soon. So I'm gonna give you a sneak peek all the way one through 10, so you've seen them all. So here is block number one. And again, for these small ones, I am doing them in some Christmas fabric. So I'm using mostly my Christmas stitched by Fig Tree. Some of them have other prints from my stash in them. Some of them have the my Lori Holt background that I'm using on my big block. Um, so I kind of just mixed and matched these a little bit, but I think they're all coming together really, really cute. You can find all the videos with the free PDF download here on YouTube. And I do have a Sew With Me um, playlist, so you can go check that and they're all there. You can also go to my website, which is confessionsofahomeschooler.com and um, find them all there as well. And actually this block right here, we had a lot of requests for. Um, this block was for like a biggie quilt. And so, oh, you can't see it. Let me get it really quick. So it's still being tested. Um, it might actually be out by the time this video comes out, so you never know. This is gonna be called Biggie Barn Star um, Quilt, and there's two options in the quilt. There's a option to make a huge, like one, like a wall hanging, just one giant star, or a quilt with biggie blocks. So here is what the blocks look like. They finish at 24 by 24 and there's nine of them, so you'll have a really nice size quilt if you go this route. Um, and then, like I said, you can also go, the uh, pattern also includes a biggie star that's just one giant star, and I think it's 40 by 40. So it'd be perfect for like a little wall hanging or uh, something like that, and then if you put them all together, this is sort of what it, what it looks like. So you've got nine of them, and my printer messed up, so just ignore that. And then you have the one giant one um, in the pattern. And then if you do the quilt like I'm going to with nine of these, it's gonna finish at um, 96 by 96. So it'll be a really good size quilt. I plan on putting it on our bed. Um, I haven't really made a quilt for our bed yet. I made a king size gingham quilt, um, which sometimes I put on there, um, but this one is actually gonna be for my bed. I've done one for all my kids, so I feel like it's time I get a Christmas quilt. <laughs> so anyways, this one's gonna be Biggie Barn Star, and it's based on our so with me block one of you had requested it from here and I thought that was such a cute idea so I kind of ran with it she's actually the one who requested is actually testing it for me now so hopefully it will be uh, coming soon and then this is our next block that is coming and that will be releasing soon if it hasn't already this is block number 10 and then here are the 12 by 12s that I'm making here on YouTube I'm doing a red and white quilt so here is block number one Oops, houses, <laughs> block number two, three. And this, I did use a red pack that I got from Fat Quarter Shop. It's kind of a mix of red prints. And then I'm just using a low volume red and white cross from Lori Holt for the backing for all of these. Um, and you could actually mix and match your backing too. That would be really cute. I just had enough to do this whole quilt, so I'm just making them all the same. Um, and then the reds are just all different. Some of them are from my stash. Some of them were from, here's our quilt block. Some of them were from, oh, I had them out of order, sorry. Some of them were from the red fat quarter bundle that I had. And then here is number 10, which is coming soon. And we are getting close to being done with that. We only have two more blocks left. And then once those are all done, um, I will bundle them all together in one pattern. So if you don't wanna download the individual patterns or whatever, you don't you can get them all together in my store. Um, and then I'll have probably some bonus finishing for that as well. So I have a really cute finishing idea for it. Um, I actually really need to get sewing because I, you know, in my brain, I did a lot of those earlier on in the year. So they were ready to go um, and they've just been sitting here and I'm thinking, oh, I have time, I have time. And now it's already October and I'm like, I need to get that finished for you guys. So that is next on my list of things to do. So stay tuned for that. That will be here on YouTube as well. Once we get done with block number 12, I'll do a finishing video. And then for next year, I have had a lot of questions about what we're gonna do next year. And I am going to be doing a pillow of the month. I feel like we've done um, you now two or three years worth of blocks of the month and putting them into a quilt. But I thought, you know what? I think a pillow of the month would be a lot of fun. They'll be seasonal, they'll all be a little bit different, but they will all be 20 by 20. So you can buy one pillow form 
and then you can we're going to make them as removable pillow covers and then you can just swap them out for the seasons if you want to get more than one you could do that too um, but that is my current plan and i already have those in the works so that is going to be really fun so stay tuned for that that will be coming next year Okay, let's take a look at the house or the trucks of the month and the houses of the month because I've done this for last year we did trucks, this year we're doing houses, and I just thought it'd be fun to show both. So I'm just gonna go back and show September. I think I might have showed this in the last podcast, but here's the September truck of the month. And then here is the September house of the month. And these are both super cute. I talked about this in the release video, so I'm not gonna talk about it too much here. Here is my October truck of the month. And the little pumpkins get me every time. I don't know why, but they're so cute. So this is actually one of my most popular months. Everybody loves October and the little trucks. Wouldn't that be so cute in a sticker? Um, I think I got a suggestion. One of my uh, followers, one of you guys had left a comment saying that I should do stickers for him. And I was like, why have I not thought of that already? That's a great idea because they're so cute. So I think we'll do something like that in the sticker. So there's October house and this one used um, fig tree fabric as well or October truck, sorry. And then here is the October house. And I used a mix of fabrics for this, but it's mostly All's, All Hallows Eve by Fig Tree because I just had a little fat eighth bundle of that in my stash. And this one I wanted to show you up close. I did little pumpkins on there and swirls, pumpkins and swirls. And this is what I did actually on my Pumpkinville quilt, which you'll see in a second, but isn't that so cute? And I think I even tried to do a little pumpkin in that door there. So um, this one kind of went with our cross stitch one. It's a little bit spooky. I'm not a huge Halloween fan. I like the season and um, like Hocus Pocus and some of those things. But for the most part, I don't decorate my house scary. I do fall stuff. So pumpkins and leaves and things like that. Um, but I thought that adding the, <laughs> the little uh, black roof and stuff was just so cute on this. Um, and then on the side over here, We've got a little pumpkin quilt and I just used a different low volume for the background on it. So it blends in a little bit, but it's also a little bit, it's almost like a, this is a little wider and this is a little creamier. So I think it in person, it still stands out. Okay, so um, I think it actually turned out really cute, but you could use a different background so it stands out a little bit more. And then on the backing, this is a Sweetwater print that I've had in my stash forever. It was from um, Sunkist, their Sunkist line. Uh, so really cute. And then I also did, a black and white gingham, I think that's from Lori Holt, and then I have my Ever Emblem personalized label that I just stuck in the binding. So that's October. Here is the November truck of the month. So from last year, super cute, and I just did a cross hatch quilting on it, which it's not my favorite thing to quilt because it's just kind of boring, but I love the finished look of these, or like if you do straight line, really close lines together. I like the way it looks, I just don't love doing it. So I was do swirls because they're just more fun to quilt. But the truck is super cute. I probably could have done a little more of a contrast on this truck because it really blends into that background pretty well. So, um, but in person, it, it actually does look pretty good. And then the leaves, super cute with the leaves in the truck. So those are all fig tree prints. And then on the back side, I have a fig tree print. This has been in my stash forever. And I wanna say it's from a line called California Girl or something like that. I've literally had this in my stash probably since I started quilting. And it's just been sitting there being waiting, waiting to be used. So uh, there's that. And then I've got a little brown print for the binding. So really cute. So that's the November. And then this one isn't quite done yet. Um, I still have to quilt it, but here's a sneak peek of the November house. How cute is that? So I wanted, I couldn't really do all the gables like I did in the cross stitch piece, but I did want this to have that kind of same vibe. So I just did those little peaks on it. I did a peak above the door and then look at this quilt on the side of the house. We've got four different leaves. And so that it didn't blend into the background, I swapped the leaf color for the background color. So instead of an orange leaf, I did the orange background. So I think that actually turned out really cute. And then it makes that little quilt pop out pretty good. And then I've got this brown gingham on the back or on the bottom for the November words. And I do believe that was from the brown gingham from the roof. And the words was from the Lori Holt um, gingham bundle that I purchased. So um, I believe the rest of the fabrics on here are from my fig tree stash. So that's a little sneak peek of November. If it's not released yet, it will be releasing October 15th. Um, so depending on when this video goes out, you'll be able to get um, all the, that and the cross stitch one in my shop. 
So the next quilt I wanna talk about is Pumpkinville. I can't remember if I showed it last time or not, so if this is a duplicate, I apologize, but Pumpkinville was my latest quilt release, and this quilt was so much fun to make. It looks like a lot of work. It's that medallion style quilt, but it was actually pretty easy to put together. It has that large house in the center, the row of smaller houses and leaves around the outside, and then another larger row around the far outside with pumpkins and um, various pumpkins, and then of course the leaves in the corners. And this one was a lot of fun. I always love adding the aqua into both my fall and my Christmas quilts because I feel like it just gives it a little bit extra pop and everything. It breaks up all of the oranges and browns and kind of greens that you have in there. So I think it turned out really fun. It finishes at 78 by 78 and I did the same quilting as I did on the October house. So it's got those little pumpkins, freeform pumpkins and swirls. And I just had a lot of fun down on my long arm with that. And I just did swirls. And then whenever I felt like it, I added in a pumpkin and just kept going. So that design is actually really fun. It's also really easy to do. Um, and if you want information on how I do that, let me know. I'd be happy to do a video. I do it on paper first so that my hands know like the, the, like motions and they just kind of get used to how to get from one place to another. And then once I'm comfortable with that, I'll go down and do it on my long arm. I don't have one of the long arms where you can program in a design. So I'm just free forming it. Um, and so it's a lot of fun. It's not perfect, but I do enjoy doing it that way. So um, let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see something like that, if you'd be interested, and I would be happy to put up a video just showing my process of how I do that. All right, and then the last sneak peek I have for you is my new Christmas quilt that is coming soon, and I'm still working out the name of it. It was originally called Cup of Cheer, and then we went to Cup of Joy, Cup of, Cup of Joy. We also have um, La La La, Fa La La Latte. Um, we had Java Jingle. We had Hot Toddy. Um, I'm gonna list them all on the screen right here because I'm having a hard time remembering, but I'd like you to leave a comment below and let me know what your vote is. It's possible that by the time you vote, by the time this goes live, I won't be able to take those into consideration, but I'd love to hear what you think. Maybe I'll put it up on Instagram so I can get some feed, like faster feedback. Um, but this quilt is so cute and I'm just gonna show you a sneak peek of it. So it is a bunch of little coffee cups, mugs, and each one is a little bit different. It has a different design on each one. And then I hand embroidered a little steam stitch on top. And that is a template in the pattern. So you can trace it on there, which is what I did. And then you can either back stitch it um, on or you can do like a running stitch. I did a running stitch because I thought it was really cute and it just looked like a sewing, like a thread stitch. So I thought it was really cute and I did that, but I'm interested to see, I think I did, last time I did embroidery like this on a Christmas quilt. Well, I did a back stitch, so it was more of like a solid line. Um, but I think the little running stitch turned out really cute. So this is the only sneak peek that I'm going to give you. You can definitely imagine it's got a cute border. This is all Sweetwater fabric. And good news about this is that Carrie from Catching Stitches is also doing a kit for these. So you're gonna be able to buy the kit to make the exact same one that I've made um, using the same exact fabric. So we're trying to do better about coordinating our kits with um, her kids with my patterns is what we're trying to do. So those will be releasing soon if they aren't already. And I will have all that information below the video. Um, and don't forget to vote on the name because I would love to see what you guys vote for. And if I can, if the timing is right, I'll take all those votes into consideration before we get this pattern fully um, done and released. So stay tuned. Oh, and I completely forgot um, to do a cross stitch for that one. So let me know if you guys would like to see the Christmas mug quilt in cross stitch form because actually now that I'm saying that out loud, I think that would be really cute. So leave a comment below, but I might do that anyway. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to giveaways and what's new at Fat Quarter Shop. So Fat Quarter Shop sent me some fun things. I do have a giveaway at the end of this video, so stay tuned and some of these will be included in that. So we're just gonna go through them really quick. We have a new Be In My Bonnet stitch card. This is set R. We've got a Chicken Club. This is Myrtle. We have a Foxtrot quilt pattern, the August Stackables, and then a Happy Fall, um, what are they calling these? Simple Pattern Series. Simple Pattern Series, so there you go. And then I also have the It's So Emma Simply Jelly Rolls book. This is a really fun book. It's got all kinds of jelly roll quilt patterns in it. They're all really, really easy. I don't know how many, does it say how many is in here? There are 16 
different quilt patterns in here and I did flip through them. They are all very, very beginner friendly and easy and perfect for jelly rolls. So if you have a lot of jelly rolls in your stash, you'll want to enter to win this because this will be a really fun giveaway. Okay, and then they also sent me a big hexy project bag. So this thing is huge. It Does it say what size it is? It is, it's about 18 inches by 18 inches. So it's a really good size. It's got a zipper top. And then I was at a quilt show recently and I saw these mesh bags from Fat Quarter Shop and she had patterns actually to stitch designs on the front of them. They were adorable. And I haven't stitched on any of mine yet. Um, I've just been using them as project bags, but it was really cute to see the stitching. So. This one is perfect. This I think is geared more towards quilting because it's so large and it says you can fit an 18 by 18 project board in here. So if you're going to like a retreat or something, you can stick that plus all your pattern pieces and things in that. And that might be a fun way to keep your projects separated. Um, if you're going to, you know, some sort of a retreat or if you're taking it to sew at a friend's house or something like that. So, all right. And I think that is it for today's video. So I hope you enjoyed it. We are gonna do a giveaway. So in order to enter the giveaway, we've got a couple requirements. Number one, you need to be a subscriber of my YouTube channel. I like to do giveaways for my subscribers. Number two, uh, shipping is really expensive international, so US only. I'm so sorry about that. I would love to be able to send worldwide, but it's just outrageous. And then number three, leave a comment below letting me know if you are either stitching along with me for the So Jolly ornaments for Stitchy or So Jolly Quilty ornaments. Um, or if you're doing something else for your ornaments for this year, leave that in the comments below as well. I always love seeing what you guys are working on for the holidays. So that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. Again, if you liked it, make sure to thumbs up. You can also hit the subscribe button in case you are not already subscribed. Not only does it help me out, but it allows you to join our fun community here on YouTube. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any upcoming fun. If you win, I will reply to your comment here on YouTube with all the information that you need to do. I will not ask you to text me or send me your credit card information for anything. This is a completely free giveaway. So if someone is replying to your comment asking for information, please don't give it to them. Um, we've been pretty good on that lately, but, um, and I do try and keep an eye on it, but there's a lot of scammers out there. That's going to be it for today. Thanks so much for hanging out with me, and I will see you next time. So grab something warm and... So grab some iced tea if it's hot where you are, or something warm and cozy if it's cold, and buckle in because I have a fun show for you guys today. I have a lot of fun things to show you today with all... If you're new to my craft podcast, they are where I share all of my makes, works in progress, things that are coming soon, and I always... So, so those are... I get that. Could Stop. you try again? No, I don't want to try again. Okay. Where is it? Where's the one that convinced me to do it? I should have been sitting... Blah. For the Christmas mug quilt, I don't want to just call it that because that's too basic, but the Christmas mug quilt will be coming soon. And leave me a comment below if you would like to see the Christmas mug cross stitch version of that. I hadn't even thought about that. And I just told you guys that every time I release a quilt pattern, I'm going to do a cross stitch. So yeah. <laughs> so I just gave myself a bunch more work. Oh, you... Every time I do these videos, I end up giving myself more work, but <laughs> I think it will be really cute. I should totally do that. Oh, and I forgot to say, if you're interested in my t-shirts, I have some new t-shirts in my shop. You can click the merch links below the video, um, and I'll also have a link um, in the description box below as well. Blocks below as well.